Welcome to the official podcast of PHP Architect. Join us to listen to the latest news and tech talk from our conferences, the magazine, and wider PHP community. This edition of PHP Podcast is brought to you by Honey Badger. More on them later. You're listening to the PHP Podcast for March 2022, Volume 21, Issue 3, World Backup Day. I'm your host, Eric Van Johnson, and with me is John Congdon. Yo. Man, it feels like... Happy Backup Day, John. <laughs> it's, hey, same to you. Did you even know there was a World Backup Day before reading this month's magazine? I did not know that. Not at all. I didn't either. Every day is Backup Day for, for here in the Johnson household, <laughs> I, t- I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay on top of it. I No, I love the fact that Scott brought this article to us and said, hey, let's let's promote it because it is very important. It's just a good re- good reminder. We have some firsthand experience, recent firsthand experience oh, with the, the benefits of having good backups. <laughs> wow, I forgot about that until you said that. For transparency, we've talked about it on our other podcast, PHP Ugly, but we had an incident with an employee who was working on doing some database cleanup and was writing a script and trying to clean things up in his local environment and decided, oh, screw it, I'm going to do this on production and just started deleting tables left and right. <laughs> drop table, drop table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was not a good a good day. But 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 made better by the fact that we had backups and with backups come hope. Having some sort of disaster recovery plan is important. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and kick it off. Scott Keck Warren came to us and said, Hey, I have an idea. I'd like to write a article, a feature article about backups. And I have to be honest with you. I what did John? I'm like I don't see a entire feature article being written about backups. And John was like, oh, I could see it. Let's let's see what what he has to contribute. And he brought to us backups for beginners. And I got to say, not disappointed. No, it was a good in depth t- kind of tutorial about different types of backups. And again, just that reminder, getting it in front of you just to. Just make sure you're thinking, do I have a good backup strategy in place? Should I change my backup strategy? Because maybe there's other ways of doing a backup they haven't thought about. So uh, I'm happy that we took the chance on it. And it was a good article. Yeah, yeah. I I, I am. He proved me wrong. I'm happy I listened to you. And I'm happy Scott contributed. And if you have an idea for an article, no matter how small or, or minor you might think it is, feel free to pitch it to us. John and I are bouncing ideas off each other all the time. And who knows, maybe you can be contributing to the next uh, backup day article. Yeah, just send an email to write, W-R-I-T-E, at phparch.com. And we'll get back to you. We're actually very friendly about it. We'll walk you through the process. We'll get get you set up with the tools you need. It's it's very, very easy to do, I promise. Had lots of first-time writers that were very nervous coming to us and it's like, listen, you just write. We'll worry about grammar or trying to clean things up. We'll proofread. We'll, you know, if there's a mistake or we think there's a mistake, we're going to reach out to you and work on it. Like you said, very friendly, very easy. Yep. Very simple. All right, let's move on. Ken Marks brings to us uh, his part three of his How to Hack Your Home with a Raspberry Pi. And congratulations to our second Raspberry Pi winner, Gabriel. Uh, we've given away two Raspberry Pis now. We have, we, do we have a third? We have we have a third. It The contest goes live on April 1st. It is not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> we we are giving away a third one. Uh, you can get to that by going to phpa.me slash pi4, four being for April, phpa.me slash pi4. So if you've been following along with this article, just... A great read, a little bit uh, more of an expansion of any like normal how to get started with your Raspberry Pi blog post sort of thing. He has he uses he implements sensors and uses PHP and creates services. I've been enjoying this read. Yeah, I love the in this article we start getting into actually using the GPIO uh, board. So we're adding the sensor to the board and starting to use it. Very informative. And that's the techie, geeky part, you know, starting to hook things up and make use of them. You, you gotta love to tinker. I, I, I am, I am such a tinker. I tell you, 
In March's Education Station, Chris Tankersley brings us Software History is Licensing. And this is just a great background on the history of licensing software in general, how we got to open source, and just kind of the state of affairs today. I'm looking forward to April's article where he actually touches on all the different types of licenses. So it's a great progression and love the read. Yeah, I enjoy I enjoy that topic as well. Yeah. Moving on to Security Corner, understanding supply chain security with Eric Mann. Supply chain has been a big topic of late. It has. And I love Eric's articles. It, they're scary as hell, but it definitely gives you lots of things to think about. And the supply chain, especially when it comes to products we use, like Composer, there there are there is a supply chain of code that we need to follow and we need to audit when we are using these libraries. Yeah, it's something very, it's one of those conveniences that it's very easy to not worry about. You just hit Composer and require and put in your package and move on with your life. And you forget that you're adding code to your code base from another source that when you run Composer Upgrade, we'll upgrade that code or that code needs to be audited or that code may have security vulnerabilities and it happens all the time. And so you can't shrug off that responsibility of staying in that loop of security. Exactly. The example of this is not only could the person writing that library turn bad, they may think they may have an end to a bunch of servers now, but their architecture might be vulnerable, not just the code itself, but if somebody could get onto their servers, change their code without them realizing it, that gets introduced into your code base. Lots of things to think about. So instead of just doing a composer upgrade for everything, sometimes it's important just to use go library by library and actually use GitHub's uh, Dependabot where it updates one library at a time. And I will actually look at the diff from where I'm at now to what they want to upgrade to and just quickly scan, make sure that everything makes sense. Moving on, the workshop, Joe Ferguson, Qs with Horizon. If you're using Laravel and Qs at all, you should check out Horizon. It is a nice package. That's, I was about to say the exact same thing. Horizon is a package specifically for the Laravel framework, and it is very nice. Th- this is a this is a very uh, simple uh, implementation. He walks you through how to implement it and use it, and some of the benefits of it. It's pretty straightforward. I, I do like uh, the packages that come out of the Laravel ecosystem. Yeah, Horizon gives you a dashboard into your jobs, so it's letting you know which how many jobs you have, how fast they're running. It's just kind of like a, a dashboard slash health monitor lets you just see what's going what's going on a little easier. In DDD Alley, Ed brings us better late than never, and he's continuing in his domain-driven design philosophy slash talking about uh, a project he's working on. And in this one, he's talking about testing his database layer. And he often feels like it's not necessary. But in this article, he shows how he came around to why he needed these tests, and hence, better late than never. He, He didn't write them originally, got to a point where he was able to add those to his test suite and is happier because of it. Even if you don't do it up front, get them added in there. Much to the title, better late than never, it's never too late to add tests. We'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Honey Badger. We really appreciate your support. Honeybadger.io, the web developer's secret weapon. Honey Badger offers exception, uptime, and cron monitoring all in one place, and it is easily installed into your web application. Deploy with confidence and be your team's DevOps hero. Their list of features can fit a team of any size. Are you just starting out? Have a fantastic free plan for life that you can use while your traffic is low. Are you an established business? Perfect. You should have a system in place to alert you to errors in real time, not finding out when your web visitors complain, if they ever do. In addition, their third-party integrations will let you connect some of the most commonly used alerting services so that you can know at a moment's notice if things go wrong. Head over to honeybadger.io to sign up for a free account to get started. And while you are listening to a PHP podcast, Honey Badger supports so many languages, including Ruby, JavaScript, Elixir, Python, Go, and so many more. Head over to honeybadger.io and start your trial today. So this month we are bringing a new column to the magazine, PSR Pickup. 
from Frank Wallen. I am a personal friend of Frank's. Frank actually works with John and I at Diego Dev, and I'm extremely thrilled that he decided to take up this article moving forward. So every month, Frank is going to be bringing to us an article around PSRs, explaining what they are, how they're used, why they're used. Sometimes he'll talk about the process of how PSRs are created and approved. I am so excited and so grateful that Frank has uh, taken this up. Yeah, the, the, this first one is around improving the developer experience, telling us why PSRs are important, and touches on the first couple uh, that centered around auto loading. You know, we started with PSR zero, which was the very first PSR, and it was uh, the basic auto loading from back then, where everything was directory based. Uh, we had long class names with underscores. Around that same time, <laughs> we were getting namespaces within PHP, which brought us PSR4, which was another auto-loading standard, which, again, kind of a directory structure, but now we don't have all these underscores in our class name. We we can simplify our class names using namespaces. PSR is definitely one of those standards that have really changed our our environment and how we code, and for the better, have, mm-hmm. has changed it for the better. I do appreciate the PHP fig for kind of championing this movement. Exactly. All right, <laughs> PHP puzzles, finding prime factors. Oscar Morita does a fantastic job, again, bringing us a new puzzle. If you don't do the puzzles, consider it. It's a great way to challenge yourself to try different things. You know, don't just take the straightforward, I want to solve it. I mean, obviously, if you're a puzzle guy and you just want to solve a puzzle, go for it. But it's also a great way to introduce yourself to different coding techniques. If you're trying to learn something new, maybe use a different design pattern to, to solve it just to try. And then at the end, he has next month's challenge of making change up your own solutions and then see what he brings to the table next month. And if you're a subscriber to the PHP Architect magazine, you have access to the PHP Architect Discord, where Oscar is actually at... And Oscar is always open to code submissions. And finally, I just can't. Beth took a a different way of writing this month. And oh my God, as I'm starting to read, I just felt that stress. I felt the, like, (laughs) myself tighten up, like, oh my God, just make it stop. I just, (laughs) I just can't do it anymore. Which, which uh, is the, never a feeling you would have while you're reading it, reading our magazine. But <laughs> I mean, it was kind of hitting home to the topic. At the end, it's about our mental health. How do we keep ourselves sane in a myriad of ways of being distracted from emails to phone calls to text messages, Slack? I mean, I mean, at any given time, we all have probably 20 different ways of somebody communicating with us and it can just be overwhelming. All right, that is going to do it for World Backup Day, Volume 21, Issue 3, for March 2022. Keep listening. Keep coding. And keep reading. And keep reading. This has been PHP Podcast, the official podcast of PHP Architect. The industry's leading tech magazine and publisher focused on PHP and web development. Subscribe today at phparch.com to see what the leaders in the community and industry are talking about.